welcome into the CHGO White Sox pregame show. It's opening day here at Ballpark Pub 514 West Pershing here in Bridgeport. We are so excited to be here. It is the start of the 2024 MLB season. The White Sox will be taking on the Detroit Tigers at 3 p.m. I'm Sean Anderson. You can call me at Sean underscore W underscore Anderson. Alongside me is Herb Lawrence. Hello. You can follow him at Eckerwall23. He's our CHGO White Sox community leader. You can follow the show at CHGO underscore White Sox. We are presented today by our friends over at Factor. Use code CHGOSOX50 to get 50% off your first box and free wellness shots for life with any active subscription at factormeals.com slash CHGO Sox50. And shout out to our friends over at Line and Cool. Uh, they got some lovely drink specials. Herb's drinking one right now. So uh, come on down if you do have some time before t- today's game. Check out some Lion and Kugel beer and uh, come check out Ballpark Pub. Some of the best sliders that I've ever had. And I know that the uh, chicken wings are getting some love here, too. Look at them. They're huge. Yeah, look at them. I mean, they're massive. I mean, they're as big as my head. Uh, anyways, today we got the Chicago White Sox opening the 24. 24- uh, 2024 season against the Detroit Tigers. A lot to talk about with this matchup, Herb. We got Garrett Crochet's first MLB start. We got Jason Benetti returning to Chicago as the Detroit Tigers broadcaster. The Tigers look very formidable this year with Tariq Skubo as their opening day starter. And much, much more, especially a new click-to-pick game that you've created. So we'll get into that a little bit later on. But Herb, yes. what are your thoughts on this opening day? Just... Uh, Spring Hope Eternal, or what, what is it? You said it right. Hope, Hope Spring, Springs Eternal. Hope Springs Eternal. I, I think that was it. Ed Lynch, the former Cubs uh, general manager who got that wrong initially. But Are you feeling hopeful? Yes. On opening day, it's the day you should feel hopeful. Like, there's nothing else but hope on this day. Like, I'm trying to be positive. As a White Sox fan, you know that's really, really hard. Mm-hmm. But if you can't be positive on opening day, there's no other day you can be. So, yes, more than likely... The White Sox will be a bad team this year. But today, they're 0-0. Zero and zero. They're tied with the Detroit Tigers, Twins, Royals, and Guardians. So they have just as much of a chance to win this division as any of these other teams. Now, if everything that the White Sox say comes to fruition, they have 100% health, they have a 95% tile seasons from each and every player, possible they can win. More than likely not. But today... It's a day for you to be hopeful, for you to be optimistic, for you to enjoy baseball because it's back. Every single fan, including Oakland A's fans, should be happy <laughs> that baseball is back because when it's gone, you'll miss it. So we're back here enjoying some times at Ballpark Pub. What what better thing can you do than have this communal uh, area right now and then the White Sox playing at 310 couple blocks down the street and talking about our community too uh shout out to all of our chgo diehards we're excited that some of them are here and it's been great to meet alejandro alejandro yes. sending in a super chat even though he's literally right here right off camera Thank meeting you, Adam alejandro. Uh, hopefully alejandro is fun at the game fun to meet him uh happy opening day from ballpark pub go Hell Sox! Yeah. uh we are excited to be here again at ballpark pub and we're excited that it is opening day uh, i get that people are upset I know that I, on our CHGO predictions that you can check out at allchgo.com, I picked the Sox to go 61 and 102. That doesn't sound very hopeful. I said their best case scenario is 71 and 91. But somehow I'm not the most pessimistic person about the White Sox. And there's a ton of people saying that they'll lose 52 or more. Or uh, 50, they'll win 52 or less, right? Here's the thing about that. Because I, I just... That's a crazy prediction. Yes. If you think that they're going to lose 110 plus games since 1961, when they created the the 162 game schedule, there have been 1,513 teams that have played a major league season, not counting 1994, where the season was shortened and 2020, where the season was shortened. So out of 1,500 teams, how many teams have lost 55 or or, or won 55 or less? (laughs) I would probably say it's a lot of seasons. 20? 13. You're wow. close, but still under. 0.8%. Wow. 0.8% of Major League Baseball teams have won 55 or less games. The White Sox aren't that bad. No. And I think that's the one thing that we've been hearing from Chris Getz about the pitching and the defense is that in one-run games, in these tighter games, while the offense might not be there, the pitching, the defense, and the IQ – should be there i don't know about this whole iq stuff as i talked about on yesterday's show but again we haven't seen this team play together maybe they'll like each other more 
there's the one story we really didn't talk about where you know Liam Hendricks goes to Boston and he talks about being vocal in the White Sox clubhouse and then facing some voices within the clubhouse being like, hey, you got got to calm that down. We see Liam Hendricks leaving. We see Tim Anderson leaving. We see Yasmani Grandal leaving. I wonder if maybe some of the more vocal players leaving leads to a more united group. I don't know. I mean, think about that. Tim Anderson has been in the White Sox clubhouse since 2016. Like, he learned lessons from that 2016 team, how veterans acted. Remember, that was the Adam LaRoche year where his kid was in the dugout all the, all the damn time. So he learned from Jimmy Rollins. He learned from Jose Abreu and all the veterans on that team. Now you take all those players out. The Lucas Giolito has been here since 2018. You take Ronaldo Lopez out of the locker room. You, like you said, uh, Liam Hendricks is gone. Lance Lynn was a big presence. We talked to Vinny at, after every Lance Lynn start or whenever he was uh, brought up. The pitchers really looked up to Lance Lynn as a leader. And I don't know if necessarily they're calling him one of the people who had the bad chemistry in the clubhouse, but these people have put their stake on. We got rid of the bad apples, which I, uh, with you, don't agree with blaming those guys who have left, which the, the current regime is doing. But if all goes the way that Chris gets, Brian Bannister, Pedro Grofal, et cetera, think it's going to go. These guys will create their new culture under Pedro Grafal's lead with the players taking the lead from Pedro Grafal because you can't just have a guy who's not playing on the field be your leader. Like, they can listen to Pedro Grafal and try to follow him as much as they can, but it's got to be somebody or somebody's on the field that are your actual leader who are actually doing something on the field. You can't just have the bench boss be hammering people and stuff. You got to have some lieutenants out there forwarding your battle standard and maybe they have some guys because all the damn royals they got on the team that are familiar <laughs> with pedro Grafal. sorry kids i swear a lot yeah hey hopefully uh that's the case and uh, chris Getz was on aj Persinski's podcast yesterday and he was asked or by eric kratz hey why didn't i get a phone call i was a former royal uh i delivered it better than eric kratz it wasn't that funny um but funny. it was basically chris just saying you know these guys play conservatively right like these guys aren't going to be hurting the team but that i don't know they're not gonna be hurting their team with their defense the issue is like what is paul de young gonna do with, with his bat i know Vinny's picking him in the click to pit but if nicky lopez can have an all-star season and he can put up a six more season i won't be mad um if paul de young wants to find his uh, st louis swag and come back to his 2019 2018 power I'd be fine with that, but it really does seem like it's up to one through five. It seems like it's up to Benintendi, Mancata, Robert, Jimenez, Vaughn, the people that they've paid or have taken very highly in the draft, and then the pitchers in defense that has been brought in. And, and hopefully someone's a leader. I don't know who the leader is, though. And obviously that's going to play out over 162, but it really doesn't seem like Robert's a leader. doesn't seem like Jimenez is a leader. doesn't seem like Mancata's a leader. Vaughn seems very shy and timid. De Young doesn't seem that outgoing. Benintendi doesn't seem that outgoing. Pilar, uh, I don't know. Like, he, no, he's I, a part time player. No one's going to be really listening it. to Kevin Pilar, even though Nicky Lopez swears by him and says the player is player. But I think that last year, when Tim Anderson got the punch delivered to him by Jose Ramirez, you saw some leadership from Andrew Vaughn trying to carry Tim out of to safety because he knew that Tim was in dire straits, but he got knocked out. He got he probably had a concussion there. And trying to just seek out Tim so he doesn't get himself more in trouble, lift his ass off the field. And this is the year for Andrew Vaughn to do it. Year four. It should be the first baseman like Jose Abreu was a leader before him. He should be taking those reins over again. But also, when you're talking about Yi Young and Nicky Lopez, both of those guys, former players who played both in the state of Missouri, one on the Cardinals, one on the Royals, their sister probably their last chance to start every day. If they, if they fail, no one else is going to give them a chance. So Paul DeYoung has some extra motivation to play well for the White Sox, to play like he played as a St. Louis Cardinal early in his career. Same thing with Nicky Lopez. He got demoted kind of when your guy came over to the team, uh, Brother Rice's finest, uh, Mike Massey. So, so he got demoted there, and so he got traded to the Atlanta Braves. This is his first chance to actually start since like 2022 – on a regular everyday basis. So motivation for those two is 
we do our jobs and do them well, we can have a starting job next year and we can hold off maybe Colson Montgomery. No, but it's coming. I mean, Colson might have to switch to third base because that position might be open next year with a $24 million owed to Moncada. You think that Paul DeYoung could play that well where Colson Montgomery gets kept out? Not as if. I don't know. About no, that. because that, I just think that Colson Montgomery's defense is the bugaboo right now. So we know he's going to hit, but if you were a shortstop, they just traded a shortstop that could hit, even though he didn't last year, and fielding was a problem, Tim Anderson. You can't do that again after preaching defense all offseason this year and then have, okay, good job, Paul DeYoung, with your defense and your minimal bat. But we're going to go with this bat and minimal defense. That will be kind of odd. Switch him over to third base where you have an opening. And I know Brian Ramos also is looking for that spot. But then you can have those two hold it up the middle, especially if they do well defensively. That's the point, right, of this whole thing. Revamp the defense, play better IQ-wise, and then move on from this. I don't know if Colson Montgomery will ever be a good defensive shortstop. So they either have to go back on their word or what their philosophy is, or he has to improve immensely defensively. But I, one, he's not going to cost fifteen million dollars like Tim. No. The other thing too is, I don't know if it will be the IQ. It might be he might be hustling and getting to the balls. It just might not be you know the cleanest operation, right? It might not be he's bad at defense and not trying and not playing, you know, uh, dumbly to put it dumbly. Uh, <laughs> like he's not, he's not, he's playing with IQ. He's just playing poorly. Right. Yeah. Like maybe you let the rookie struggle because he's the rookie and he has the bat. And as long as he's producing with the bat, you'll see you know positivity from uh, Colson Montgomery. Herb, that's next year, though. Uh, let's that take is. a break, and then we'll focus on one guy that I don't think has gotten a ton of love, mainly just because people aren't really excited for this team. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about Luis Robert Jr. We'll talk about the lineups. We'll talk about the starting pitchers. We also want to talk about our friends about uh, Alani Google. What are you drinking? I'm drinking a delicious summer shandy. Look at you. You can enjoy a summer shandy like Herb. You can enjoy a sunset wheat from our friends over at Line & Kugel. You can enjoy a berry vice from Line & Kugel. You can enjoy a lakeside cherry from Line & Kugel. For over 150 years, Line & Kugel has combined German brewing traditions with Wisconsin innovation, innovation. our favorite word for our guy Vinny. And whether it's you know a, a rainy day like it has been over the past few days and you're just looking to pass the day maybe at night, Maybe you're looking to enjoy some good old American baseball, America's pastime, and you're looking to go uh, to the Liney Lodge in right field, the guaranteed right field, and crack open a sunder sh summer shandy. I don't know what you like to do, but I know that you'd enjoy a line and Google with it. I'm not a huge beer drinker, Herb, uh -huh. but that Sunset Wheat and those Berry Weiss are truly some of the best beer that I've had. I've had. Just delicious. And I haven't had a shandy, and apparently that's the best one. It, I mean, by far, it's not even close. The summer shandy is their... To me, their flagship beer, the thing that people know Lion and Kugel's for, and it always goes down smooth in the summer. Absolutely. And, hey, it feels like a summer day with baseball back. It's sunny. This it's like 55 proud. degrees. Wow. Greg Braggs is smoking on the back patio. I mean, this is – The cup jersey on like a yeah, jerk? He's right there. Uh, Still a jerk. Anyway, Flavors <laughs> Life's Simple Moments with Lion and Kugel's, the official craft beer of the Chicago White Sox. Go to – Liney.com, that's L-E-I-N-I-E.com slash C-H-G-O to find delivery options near you. That's Liney.com slash C-H-G-O or pick up Liney Kugels pretty much anywhere. They sell beer like Ballpark Pub. Liney Kugels, flavor of the moment. Celebrate responsibly the Jacob Liney Kugel Brewing Company, Chippewa Falls. Yes. yes. Uh, and we also want to let you know about our friends over at Ray, C-D-J-R. If, if you are in the market for a new vehicle, then check out our friends over at Ray, Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, and Ram in Fox Lake. They're celebrating the Jeep Celebration Month event all month long. And do you know what that means, sir? I don't. Can you'll you tell me what it, is, what it means? You'll be able to rave about their savings for a limited time. Lease a new 2024 Jeep Grand Cherokee Laredo Altitude for $439 a month for 39 months. And if that Grand Cherokee isn't big enough for you, check out the third row and lease a new 2024 Jeep Grand Cherokee Limited L for $479 a month for 39 months. At rate, CDJR, you'll always be able to shop one of Chicagoland's largest inventories and drive home with more money in your pocket than you'd expect thanks to Ray's price promise. So don't miss out. Shop great deals all month long and save big because Ray CDJR makes buying a new, new vehicle more affordable than ever. And for listening to CHGO, if you mention CHGO when scheduling an oil change or mentioning it at the service center, mentioning CHGO at Ray CDJR slash service, you'll get a free 
oil change that you have to schedule before April 1st. So get a free oil change over at Ray CDJR. Mention CHGO when you book online or at the service center and do that by April 1st. So if you're in the market for a new vehicle, then you have to check out the team at Ray, Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, and Ram because they're the only team we recommend. Visit them today on Rock 12 in Fox Lake. For more information, visit Ray, CDJR in Fox Lake or Ray, CDJR.com. Serving the community since 1960. Three. Uh, Herb, hello. Let's first tell people about the 40-man roster because that has been adjusted. We did get the full 26-man roster uh, yesterday, uh, but we weren't really sure what the corresponding moves were. Those have been uh, put out in press release by the White Sox. So Jordan Leisure makes the team, Dominic Leone makes the team, and Brian Shaw makes the team. All those guys will be in the bullpen. They placed... Shane Drohan and Jimmy Lambert on the 60-day injured list. Lambert dealing with a right rotator cuff strain and Drohan dealing with uh, left shoulder nerve decompression surgery. Not and good. that means that Sammy Peralta was designated for assignment. Mm. Uh, so nothing that I'm really upset about there. I am totally fine with it. Uh, and I think, too, we've seen Brian Shaw go down to the minor leagues before. I don't think it would be absolutely crazy if Brian Shaw has the idea of, hey, We're going to get you some work in Major League Baseball. You're going to start in the opening day roster, get a Major League pay uh, salary, and then we might give you some extra work down in Charlotte. I think think Brian Shaw is probably long for this team, and they're probably going to figure out some way to maneuver him so he's a White Sox for life. Yeah, and the thing Paul Canerco. (laughs) The thing is, though, too, Sean, like they don't have a fifth starter on that 40 man roster as yet, or they're doing this on purpose because the first games. The first, what, five games, they're just going to run their one through four and then Garrett Crochet again. So they don't need a fifth starter until their sixth game versus the Atlanta Braves because the off day tomorrow. So I assume they'll bring up Nick Nostrini for that start versus the Braves. And then there has to be another person taken off with a 40-man roster because Nick is currently not on it. So I'm fine with this. There's no real big loss there. Shane Drohan, we barely knew you. He's got a nerve damage in his shoulder. We got him from Boston on a Rule 5 draft. So, I mean, no harm, no foul there. Um, Peralta, I'm not surprised with, but he pitched all right last year. I think no one's really going to pick him up, and he'll probably be reassigned to AAA or AA, uh, and the White Sox will have use for him. They have enough lefties, I believe, in their bullpen to cover for the, the near future, and Peralta's all right. So it's not going to be anything where anybody's going to be losing sleep because their whole roster is filled with guys who are at the bottom or slightly above that on a roster of any team. And so Sammy Peralta, you know, no one's going to pick up Sammy Peralta because he's on the bottom of the White Sox who are probably 28th, 29th, or 30th in the league. So if you're in the bottom of their roster, who on the 28 teams above them are going to pick up Sam Peralta. Right. It's a good safe move. Well, and two, I love Tanner Banks more than Peralta. So if we're talking about lefties uh, on the 40, man, I'd rather have Tanner Banks than Sammy Peralta. So if that's really, truly the move, I, I don't mind it. Uh, let's give you the uh, full White Sox 26 uh, man roster for opening day. Garrett Crochet, Michael Soroka, Eric Fetty, and Chris Flexen are your starting pitchers. Michael Kopech, Stephen Wilson, John Brevia, Jordan Leisure, Dominic Leone, Brian Shaw, Davey Garcia are the righties in the bullpen. And then Tim Hill and Tanner Banks are the lefties in the bullpen. Your catchers will be Corey Lee on the bench and Martin Maldonado Maldonado as your starter. Uh, the infielders, you have Yohan Moncada, you have Andrew Vaughn, Paul DeYoung, Nicky Lopez, and then also throw in Braden Shoemake in there. In your outfielders, Kevin Pillar, Gavin Sheets, who can also play outfield, infield. He's going to hit righties. Uh, he can be in the outfield. I don't know if he can play it. Yeah, Dominic Fletcher, <laughs> Aloy Jimenez, and Luis Robert Jr. are your final hitters. Uh, we can look at the starting lineup. But uh, we first want to let you know about our friends over at Factors. Today's takeaways are presented by Factor. Use code CHGO SOX to get 50% off your first Factor box. That's code CHGO SOX50 to get a 50% off your free Factor box and free wellness shots for life with any active subscription at factormeals.com slash CHGO SOX50. The biggest takeaway, at least looking at this lineup, is Luis Robert Jr. is going to need to step up. And I don't think we've talked enough about him this offseason. Mm-hmm. I know that when we went and made our predictions, Vinny picked him, you picked him, I picked him to be the most likely all-star on the White Sox. There is really no other choice on this team because this is a center fielder 
who plays elite defense and hits 38 home runs. It's everything you need on a team that just won the division. Oh, wait, this isn't 2022. And somehow there's been two hellacious years that we've had to go through. Uh, the lineup for today's game, Andrew Benatendi in left field, Yon Moncada at third base, Luis Robert Jr. in center field, Aloy Jimenez at DH and batting fourth, Andrew Vaughn batting fifth at first base, Paul DeYoung at shortstop batting sixth, Kevin Pillar in right field batting seventh, Martin Maldonado at catcher batting eighth, and then Nicky Lopez is your ninth hitter, and he will be at second base. Robert Jr., yep. if he's able to truly hone in a little bit more, we didn't see anything great from him in spring training. I don't know if he was actually trying. We didn't see a stolen base attempt at all from Luis Robert Jr., and he's talked about probably wanting to increase his stolen bases this year. Yep. I was just thinking, you know, what's the true best case scenario when Kevin asked us this and I said 71 or 91? The true best case scenario is that Luis Robert Jr. hits 40 home runs. Mm -hmm. He steals 25 bags. He stole 20 last year and he puts up seven war and he truly becomes a superstar. We were talking about the what 13 or 12 superstars currently in Major League Baseball. There's no reason why Luis Robert shouldn't be a superstar in today's game. And I think if you put him on the Dodgers, it's likely that if he has another season like last year, that he's a superstar. Like, I, I, it's a shame that I don't think there's more excitement about Robert Jr. Yeah, and I think uh, like other teams, like the teams in the West Coast, usually their superstars kind of get overshadowed because either they're a bad team and or because the West Coast games start so late. I think Luis Robert is a victim of what the White Sox are, is a bad organization, and they have one shining star out there who, for – Everything that he did last year, that was really his first full year of performing at the level that most of us think he should perform at, like for a full season. Remember at the beginning of last year, he got benched for not hustling or not communicating by Pedro Grafal. Since then, he's become the all-star superstar, and I would put him in that category that the White Sox and most observers think that he can be. And the sky's the limit for him. He's a young cat still. He can do better. There's things that he still does poorly at the plate. His his uh, swing selection, the pitches he swings at, really bad sometimes. I think patience, just uh, increasing his walk rate by 1%, which is a lot, but increasing his walk rate by 1% will make him that much better of a player because his defense is back to where the level he needed to be when he was a rookie, when he won the gold glove. And the sky's the limit. And with Aloy Jimenez and Andrew Vaughn hitting behind him, I don't know if you believe in protection too much, but I do. If Aloy is the guy that we saw in spring training, pitchers are going to have to pick their poison. Hey, I know uh, Luis Roberts, the only real true superstar in this lineup, but that man Aloy can hit 40 if he's healthy. So I don't want to walk Luis Robert in front of him because that man behind him still can do some damage. And year four, Andrew Vaughn should be a little bit more comfortable in his job and his routine and what he does every day and should be a better player progressing from each year where he's hitting more home runs each year. So I think that Luis Robert Jr. this year needs his people to be both healthy and productive so he can ascend. If he ascends, all the rest of the people around him can probably look at him and say, all right, let's go. We want to get, get, we got a superstar there. My bad. Uh, we want to give a shout out to Kenny who gave us a $5 super chat uh, saying, thank you for your leadership. So Herb, Thank you for your leadership. Thank uh, you, Kenny. Just being a, a brave leader here at Ballpark Cup, being a true community leader uh, for CHGO White Sox. We also want to give a shout out to Ian, Connor, Matt, Luke, Blankenheim, Melissa, Stephen, KPW, Derek, Dan, and all the people hanging out with us in the YouTube chat. Make sure you're hitting the thumbs up button. We appreciate it. We got 85 people watching, but only 21 likes. So uh, if you haven't hit the like button yet, we would love a little like there. Make it make sense. Make it make sense. There you go, Sarah. That's and Sarah. Our producer, Sarah. Hi. Hi. Uh, yeah, you should put yourself on camera again. No, no, no. no camera. Camera. Damn it. Yeah, I think you'd have to step in front of the camera, which my guy I did. Luke, my guy Luke I liked it. <laughs> but Robert, I hope that Mancata and Jimenez are healthy enough to give him protection. I think protection is real when you have a player of Robert's power. If you throw anything over the middle of the plate, he's going to hit it 450. If they're able to get on Base. Whether that's Moncada drawing walks at an elite level like we've seen before, mm -hmm. whether that's Jimenez, maybe not walking, but we've seen him kind of be a high average guy, yeah. even though he, he's got great power. Uh, we've seen him really put a ton of balls in play and get on base that way. If they're healthy, 
and they've managed their bodies correctly, and Chris Getz has them all on the same page, maybe this team could be fun. I don't know. I mean, there's no excuses for any of these guys. Like, I know the last couple of years we came into the CHGO White Sox pregames and postgames with expectations on these opening days. Like, when we started in 2022, we're coming off a division winner. We're like, okay, the next step. Let's go. And maybe they felt it. And they were hurt that year. Yo, Yo Mancada and Aloy Jimenez, of course, every year they're hurt. But this year is a year where no expectations are needed at all. Not one. Like, no one's expecting Aloy Jimenez to hit 40 home runs. If he does, they're like, finally, that's the guy we've been waiting for for a long time. That's the thing where they have no pressure on them. They're both in kind of walk years where Yoan Moncada has a team option for $24 million next year. They're not going to pick that up if Yoan Moncada is Yoan Moncada from the last couple of years. So Yoan's got to go out and get another sizable contract for himself, either with the White Sox or another MLB team. So the motivation of getting paid and the motivation of there's no actual people counting on us to do anything for this team and their team has no expectations so I can relax and be myself. And through that, those two guys we already know are talented. So anything less than their best or what we project them will be disappointed. But no one in the Major League Baseball world is like, man, if Aloy doesn't hit 30 home runs, he's a bust. No one cares. We only care as White Sox fans. You don't think anybody's saying Aloy Jimenez's name around the Major Leagues? No. You want Moncada? No. When If they have good years this year, somebody will look to trade for him. But no one's expecting that this year do you know, at all. Well, do you know who is expecting Aloy Jimenez to hit 40 home runs? Is he sitting at the table with me? No, it's Aloy Jimenez. <laughs> Aloy Jimenez thinks he's going to hit 40 home runs. And honestly, that's why what Kevin asked, who's going to hit the most homers on our team. Uh, and we put that up on allchgo.com. I said 41. Because if he thinks 40, I'll be optimistic. You know what? He's he's underestimating himself. He'll hit one more. All right? I mean, I, I, like, I love the stance change. I think it's going to be really interesting to watch him as a hitter at the plate today, especially against a lefty who throws heat. Oh because God. if he's able to turn and burn on a fastball that's 101 uh, and in his wheelhouse, we know that he can send it to Jim Tomey Lanes. Yeah. Blackout and, game 2008. Yeah. And, and Tariq Skubal. Terry. Skubal. Sorry. I When I hear Tariq Skubal and then I look at Tariq Skubal. You think the, it's Tariq from the roots. Yeah. The name and the, and the person don't match. So I learned that his name is pronounced Tariq Skubal. So. Tarek Skubal. Skubal. He's filthy. He is the reigning American League pitcher of the month from last September. Filthy stuff. But he gets hit hard when he gets hit. Like, he, people size up that ball and hit him for big home runs. And if Aloy can run into one today, Luis can run into one today, I'm not sure the White Sox are going to be giving up a bunch of runs today because I have faith in what Garrett Crochet is going to do, just how long he'll do it. Yeah, we'll talk about crochet in just a second. We'll talk about the Detroit lineups as well. Want to let you know, though, about our friends over at Empire today. Five, five eight, eight, eight. Oh, my, oh, All right, ready? Three, two, one. Five, eight, eight, eight two, three hundred. Empire today. The bar didn't sing along with us, and that's weird. Uh, Empire today, you can shop at home convenience, the right product for your needs, quick and professional installation, and a low price guarantee. Empire Today is the best place to get new flooring. So, of course, they have copycats, but Empire cannot be beaten on their quality, service, and speed. So, so competitors advertise low-quality products that Empire simply won't carry. Empire won't promise the lowest prices because anyone who does is putting flooring in your home that they wouldn't put in theirs. Empire keeps shopping for floor floors simple with a curated product selection. Their philosophy is to help you find what you need and not overwhelm you with thousands of choices and substitutes. What they leave out of their selection is just as important what they put in. Their product team exhaustively pumps through thousands of product samples each year to find the perfect samples for your home. And you can check out those samples with their virtual floor designer. It's a great way to see how new floors will look in any space. It's easy. Just snap a picture and instantly see how new floors will look in your room. So schedule a free in-home estimate today. All listeners can receive a $350 off discount when they use promo code CHGO. Restrictions apply. See empiretoday.com slash CHGO for details. And if you're looking into place a wager on today's games, go check out our friends over at Circa Sportsbook. They are still fairly new to the Illinois uh, Sportsbook game. Uh, and if you haven't downloaded the Circa Sportsbook app, you are missing out. Download the Circa app today at circasports.com slash Illinois dash app. That's circasports.com slash Illinois dash app. Games will strive to be a minus 110 split. 
on the circuit sports menu, unlike other games or other sports books, which may use a minus 115 or minus 120 split. If you like the Sox to win today, if you like them to cover today, Circa is where you will get the best lines possible. They don't limit players based on their winnings either. Every player has the same limits on the other books who do limit winning players. And they can encourage you to download other sports books. Uh, to compare the lines from each sports book and see that you are getting the best price for your wager over at Circa Sportsbook. And there are real people behind the Circa Sports brand who resolve issues in a timely fashion, unlike other books who use chat bots. And if you like this live event, we will have an event coming up with Circa. We got the Bears draft party. Uh, is that the one where Gary Fenks, Fensick will be there? I don't know. Greg Braggs Greg Bragg. staring at his phone two feet away from us, but apparently you can't hear us. Uh, but Circa will be out there for a draft party. Over it's as loud as Cubs jacket. So if you or some of you know may have a problem with gambling, call 1-800-GAMBLER, 1-800-426-2527, text GMB to 833 or visit areyoureallywinning.com. Uh, all right, Herb. Uh, yeah. We still haven't gotten the attention of Greg Braggs Jr., but I'm, I'm still pretty sure I'm right. Uh, Circa on the Gary Fensick event? Yes, thumbs up. Thank you, Greg Braggs Jr. All right. Uh, 85 let's... Bear. Gary Stinks, 85 Bears. Uh, let's flash the White Sox lineup one more time, uh, and then let's flash the Tigers lineup one more time. We'll go through the White Sox lineup again for today's opening day. Uh, starting at 3 o'clock, White Sox versus Tigers. You got batting leadoff, Andrew Benatendi in left field. Batting second, Yohan Moncada at third base. Luis Robert Jr. in center field. Batting fourth, Eloy Jimenez at DH. Batting fifth, Andrew Vaughn at first base. Batting sixth, Paul DeYoung at shortstop. Batting seventh, Pilar, Kevin Pillar in right field. Martin Maldonado batting eighth at catcher. And finally, batting ninth, Vicky Lopez, the second baseman. And then if we go to the Detroit Tigers, I know that people are really high on the Tigers. And they're like, oh, the Tigers could be a sleeper pick. Tigers could be a sleeper pick. You are one of those people? I'm one of those people. Okay. Who the hell is Andy Abanez? Uh, he's a right-hander. There you go. He's a right-hander. Uh, leading off for the Detroit Tigers, Andy Abanez, the Detroit Tigers. He's Raul's baseman. son. Raul's? Yeah. Is he really? No. No. Uh, batting second, Spencer Torkelson at first base. Batting third, Riley Green in left field. Batting fourth, Mark Hanna at DH. Batting fifth, Matt Beerling in right field. Batting sixth, the newly extended Colt Keith at second base. Batting seventh, Jake Rogers at catcher. Batting eighth, the million-dollar man, Javi Baez at shortstop. And batting ninth, Parker Meadows in center field. My thing is, I know White Sox, once they, White Sox fans, once they hear the name Javi Baez, they instantly boo but that guy out of anybody thrives on some adversity so be indifferent to a hobby bias at bat today if you're a white Sox fan at guaranteed rate field because you remember every time he used to come here to guaranteed rate in his tiger days he's been a terrible tiger he would always show up versus the white Sox because white Sox fans would lustily boo him every time he came up be indifferent Read a paper while he comes up. He'll get out. He'll get you out. And if you're a White Sox pitcher and you throw any strikes to Javi Baez, you should be DFA. You can get him out of the strike zone immediately. He's not walking. Look at his stats. Well, the man is terrible now. We haven't talked about Garrett Crochet just yet, but, like, I understand you're probably like, hey, you know, go up there and just throw three of your nastiest sliders and just get him swinging and missing. But also, a Garrett Crochet 101 fastball – Boom, boom, boom. And just seeing Javi Baez take the biggest hack that he can. I mean, he'll be swinging and spinning in the dirt like a bullet. I would love to see Garrett Crochet just try to blow past a fastball past Javi Baez because those whiffs would be fun. I mean, remember Liam Hendricks came in that game opening day in Detroit? Was it opening day? Yeah, a couple of years ago. And he tried to throw a fastball past Javi Baez, and Javi Baez almost hit a home run. A.J. Pollock missed the ball, and that scored the winning run there. Oh. That's is what Javi Baez can do. Elevated fastballs are no problem, at least in the anecdotal uh, evidence that I've seen. Yes, I know that you want to make him look embarrassed, especially you want to announce your presence if you're Garrett Crochet, throw a 100-mile-per-hour fastball past a hundred mi- across a fastball hitter and say, hey, I don't care how good you are. Hit it. My, there's no reason to try hard versus Javi Baez. He's going to allow you to get him out just by his over aggressiveness. And you're watching the pitch right now. I don't know if it was a fastball up. Yeah. Yeah. Fastball up in a way. And he thought he got all of it. And yeah. then AJ Pollock just missed it because he hit the wall. Oh, oh God. 
Nope. Hit, hit the but wall. It hit off the wall. Yeah. He did catch it. Oh, my God. All right. I didn't need to relive that. Why did you make me relive that? Yeah. That's that's what Javi Baez does. But here's the thing. He was late on a 98-mile-per-hour fastball, so if it's 101, no issue, baby. He's swinging and missing. All right? I mean, that's that's baseball for you. All right? I mean, you just crank up those MPHs, and that's a swing and a miss. But we'll, we'll see. Uh, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not too worried about anyone really in that Tigers lineup. I know you, you like Torkelson, I, but I, I think truly – yeah, it's all about the starting pitcher today. It's all about Garrett Crochet. We've seen him sent down Otani twice in spring training. Field. We've seen him send down Mike Trout. I mean, name a star, and he has set him down. Crochet was lights out in spring training. Is this truly a lineup that can give him fits? Hmm. Um, you and they don't have some of their key hitters in there because they're trying to do matchups. But yeah. This is a lineup that maybe possibly give them some fits. Um, Spitzel Torkelson came on last year. I think in the early season, he only hit, before the All-Star game, only hit eight home runs. After the All-Star game, I think he hit 23. So he came on to be that guy who was drafted one overall that the Tigers have thought him to be. So a year and a half of just toiling at the major league level and then finally getting. That's what I'll get to with Andrew Vaughn. I think Spitzel Torkelson found his rhythm and stop trying to be drafted first, first pick overall, and then just said, I'm talented. I'll let the talent take over and find my rhythm, find my day-to-day process, and co- be comfortable with who I am. That guy is becoming a not a superstar, not even a star, but after the end of this year, I wouldn't be surprised if Torkelson hit 40 bombs and be the guy that we all thought he was going to be when he's a rookie, and I picked him to be the rookie of the year and being greatly disappointed. You know me. I've been picking the Tigers for the last three years strong to be the White Sox contender for first or second place in the AL Central. Each year, they've disappointed. This year, they still look strong. I mean, with the additions of Kenta Maeda and, of course, Tarek Skubal at the top of the rotation, it's going to be a Cy Young Award contender. I hope they continue to disappoint. I hope Spencer Torkelson strikes out 200 times, and I hate this team. Uh, with all my, you hate my, the Tigers. Yes, like rank the 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 hatred in the central from you. Uh, number one would be the Tigers. Okay. Number one would be the Twins. <laughs> number one would be the Royals. And oh no, wait, I actually hate the Guardians the most. I actually hate all of them. I mean, that's the thing is, right now I understand that people think that I hate the White Sox, which I hate a certain person who owns the White Sox. Every White Sox fan hates the White Sox. Um, and yeah, I I did pick them to go sixty one and one hundred one. But right now, they're undefeated. Yeah. If it, I, I know I'm the math guy on the show. You are. I know I'm always crunching those numbers. I'm always being analytical. I'm going on StatCast. I've looked at every single projection. Mm-hmm. And the one number that sticks out most to me right now is that the White Sox are undefeated. Okay? And if the White Sox do somehow win the AL Central and you have a healthy Moncada, Jimenez, and Robert, I'm going to ask you a question. Yeah. If it is a tight AL Central and the White Sox are somehow competitive with all their baseball IQ, is this a team that somehow adds? I mean, if, if they reach, you know, if everything clicks and Moncada's getting on base, Jimenez is hitting 40 bombs, Luis Robert Jr. is a five-plus center fielder, Mike Soroka is an all-star, like, instead of tra- trading people, you think? I'm like, I, I think that, because we, I mean, I don't even know if they have interest, if people have interest in Moncada and Jimenez, even if they, you know, yeah. showed out because of their price tags of 25 and 13 million. So, like, do the Sox add? I'm just trying to remember in 2020 where they're actually competing if they added. I know they tried to get Lance Lynn in 2020 during the season, and it didn't work out. They got him after the season. But 2021, I don't believe they added anybody when they were winning the division there. I don't believe. I could be wrong. I think maybe just uh, the pitcher um, that was kind of bad. Uh, no, no. They picked um, Kimbrell and um, Tepera. That was, yeah, that right? was 2021. Yeah. yeah. Kimbrough and Tapera up that year. So they did try to fortify that team. Now, it is a totally different front office, so I can't necessarily judge Chris Getz on what the mistakes of Kenny Williams and Rick Hahn did. But, no, I don't see a path for them surprising themselves by being at the top or close to the top of the AL Central and then going out to get the supplemental pieces that they need. Because I think that they would think, oh, we're just a year ahead, so we're going to keep the – keep the momentum forward and go with the guys who are in this clubhouse. If they fail, they fail. If they don't, we're, you know, we got to work with house money there. And also it would be opposite of what this whole thing is about. 
It's not about competing. I don't think they've ever in this offseason talked about competing for the AL Central. It's about rebuilding, even though they haven't said that. It's about bringing in young, good talent. So I think even when they get to the All-Star break and if they're close, we might see another white flag trade back in 97. When you give away players that have been helping this team win just to replenish the, the, the farm system and replenish the major league talent, and so next year in 2025, and maybe in the offseason, you can go and get players. But who really believes in this team if they perform at a high level like that Michael Soroka is going to still be here? Because he's on a one-year deal. And after next year, he's free. If he goes out and becomes the Michael Soroka that was in the Braves for that rookie year, they would trade him yeah. more than likely because they're going to get something really good because think about the trade market. Most people are going to be trying to compete because of the new – uh, playoff system so you have people like the white Sox, the a's and the other teams at the bottom of the league competing for those players that they have on the team and i don't think any national is going to be better than michael soroka who was on the atlanta braves if he's pitching that way for the 2024 white Sox. i don't know if it those would be considered white flags trade either just because soroka's on an expiring deal right like i think a true white flag trade for this 2020 20, 20, 2024 team is trading robert jr Right, I mean that's oh, that's the that's, ultimate white flag. That's, so that's I, exodus. I would, yeah. That's mass exodus. I know White Sox, and they might not fill that stadium today. I know it's not going to be a full house, but trade Luis Robert with three years left. Mass exodus. There won't be this many people at Ballpark Pub next time, even though this is a great place. What would be a worse move: trading Luis Robert Jr. Uh, with three years left of control, or having your uh, beloved national broadcaster go to an in division rival Oof. and make his debut? at your home on opening day in 2024. Oh, wait, that's not a nightmare. That's actually happening. <laughs> uh, Jason Benetti's the new Detroit Tigers broadcaster. What are we expecting today? Not only from the Tigers broadcast booth yeah. and Jason Benetti, who finally gets to be like, hey, look at my new, like, I mean, this is breaking up with your ex and then going to your ex's house for like, Christmas dinner with your new girl. Yeah, with your new girl. Like I, I, yeah. Woof. Who, what do you expect? Who from, you upgraded with? Yeah. What do you like, expect from Benetti, and what do you expect from the new Sox guy, Shrift? I expect the White Sox, if they're the classy organization that maybe they are, to give Jason Benetti a full video tribute of all his great calls during his time as a White Sox announcer. That would be the fairest thing they could do. Maybe not today because of the Open Day festivities, but tomorrow. I mean, our Saturday's game, the second game of the series, to pay homage to what he did here, to lose that guy, one of the best broadcasters in baseball, in sports, is a travesty. And, you know, we blame the people we need to blame. I don't need to name them by name. You know who, who needs to be blamed. But to have him on opening day do the broadcast against the team and bring in his new, fresh-looking girl, the Detroit Tigers, into the stadium with their big-time Cy Young Award winner, it hurts White Sox fans. I don't know if I'm going to listen to any of his broadcasts because I don't know if we're going to get the game first. And secondly, I want to check out John Schiffrin. I want to give John Schiffrin a fair shot. The uh, spring training games are not real games, both for the players and for the broadcasters. He's trying to get used to Steve Stone. I think the guy has a future, but it's going to be tough sledding for him because he's not from here. Chicago's a provincial city, and – you got to kind of be a Chicagoan to garner the respect of these fans, especially White Sox fans. But it looks like he's going to try to ingrain himself into the culture. He said he's already going to go to the 108 section. I hope he comes on our show. So I, we I, can hope, finally, I hope he makes it out alive. We can, yeah, we can, we can interview him and talk to him about having a better, what's your favorite food, anything but spicy. See, that type of stuff won't go with uh, Chicagoans. I love you can't dogs. just do this nonsense regular ass answers here in chicago you gotta say i like pizza bus i like dogs i like pizza i like uh budaki i like getting sauced up at 11 p.m and eating an entire bag of tostino's pizza rolls he just seems like very vanilla and on purpose vanilla like not trying to get fired not trying to uh rustle any set rustle any feathers or anything like that i need him to have some actual personality there's some personality in there i know it's in there just let it out john Griffin. the fans will love you if you do it at mercy Yes. Uh, I mean, we let that guy be himself. He was leaving the booth, being unprofessional, and we love our Hawk Harrison. Yes. I yeah. mean, like, 
truly, we had people be themselves, and that's my biggest criticism of Shrippen so far, is that I don't feel like he's actually being himself. And hopefully he's uh, a little bit more comfortable today. Maybe Steve Stone, the uh, – I mean, maybe he'll, maybe maybe one series will get him comfortable because he's really never done this no. at a professional level called baseball. So I don't know. It will be a sight to see with John Schriffen in I'm the sure, ballpark. I'm sure we'll check out a couple of innings. I think the ballpark app has uh, the Detroit uh, broadcast. We can check out for Are we like an inning. Going to the game? No, no. I don't have tickets. I don't have tickets either. We have game time. Maybe we could slip in. Look at my know. man. Yeah, I, I was. This isn't even I a read. Read. I was read. just more. I was just more. Uh, Mentioned it. You could probably get a last minute deal. Just wait outside the gate until three and buy like a five dollar ticket. Hey, right? Game time says the prices go down an hour before the game and even an hour after the game. So it's not even a read. Yeah, game time has tickets up to and after first pitch. Yeah, I mean, the that, lowest pick uh, price ticket all in is thirty nine dollars, which is crazy because yesterday was twenty four. So I don't know if more people are going or not. Um, I heard from a certain ticket specialist at CHGO uh, that they sold 25,000, yeah. uh, which I'm not sure if is, is real or not because a different person on that same show then showed me all the sections. And there are some pretty decent grayed out sections. I mean, like the upper deck's kind of thin, but the other sections are pretty grayed out. Yeah. I think that this is going to be a pretty decent crowd. Since 1993, there have been two seasons where they didn't get 30,000 people for the home opener, that, not counting 2020, not counting 2020 and not even counting 2021 when you had no one at the home opener. Um, so it was 90. What, when was, what year was the white flag tree? 97. Nine, it was, so it was 98 and 99 were the years that they were at, I think 25 and 26,000. Um, I, I think it's that bad. I think yeah. we're in a fandom that is this hate. Has this much hatred for Jerry Reinsdorf and doesn't really want to give them their money or time or effort. Um, but I think that people might be interested in Garrett Crochet. He's making his first major league start, the former first rounder, the 11th overall pick in the 2020 draft. We saw him debut in 2020, throwing 101 miles per hour out of the bullpen, making his first. First start since college against Florida, where he went four innings. What do you expect from the six six lefty? Ooh, it's so tough to to pin down what he's going to do because it's a different role. But we saw the stuff. The stuff is undefeated. Plus fastball, plus slider. Can he command a third pitch consistently to keep him off that? But two pitches, as you've pointed out in the past, Sean, you could be a two pitch starter if those two pitches are plus plus. And it looks like. Uh, they're trying to counter that with a bunch of right-handers in their lineup. But you're putting a right-hander and Andy Abanez at the top of the order. It doesn't strike feel or anybody when you have Andy Abanez at the top of the order. I'm sure Garrett Crochet is going to have the butterflies today, but I'm expecting him to go out and give us at least four innings of shutout baseball versus the Tigers. I'm not expecting much more. I know that they and he doesn't believe in pitch counts, and they don't believe in limiting him. But it's a start. There's going to be adrenaline flowing. There's going to be the stadium rocking. And the Tigers are going to be really out there to try to destroy this guy. So I think they're going to drive up his pitch count early. And he's going to leave the game by the fourth. And it's going to be a bullpen game. So I hope I'm wrong. I hope Garrett Crochet pitches six innings. And it looks phenomenal. But I think he's going to leave the game after the fourth inning with giving up nothing. It's going to be a bullpen game after that. I think he's limited to 80 pitches. We'll see what his actual pitch count is. But I think they would be thrilled to get 80 pitches out of him. Last year, his biggest issue was walks. He had 13 walks in 12 and two-thirds innings. But we heard from Chris Getz yesterday, and we've seen so far through spring training, that he has been efficient, that he has been a strike thrower. And I understand the two-pitch mix being concerning to some people. But him being this freakishly big, him throwing this freakishly hard, the only comp from the left-handed side that you really can actually give him is Randy Johnson. And Somebody that's unfair. Who, I, I unfair, got you. But he looks that dominant. I know it's unfair. He looks that dominant. So if he goes out and throws four shutout innings, you know I'm going to be on the post-game show saying we have the big unit too. Uh, you know our, I'm going to be – I, like, I'm, I'm, is, I'm battling right now, Sean, to say judge him on being the opening day starter in the traditional sense of opening day starter or judge him on a guy who's making his first major league start ever. Like, I'm, judge, I'm judging him on 
how effective can this fastball be? It's not even about the opening day starter. It's not about making your first major league start. It's what does that fastball look like? Because if he has gotten to a place where his body's healthy enough that over 30 games, he could start four innings in each of them and throw anywhere from 98 to 101 with his fastball, they have an ace. Point blank, period. I mean, we've seen with that length before, the only guy comparable from the left side I know is Randy Johnson and Chris Sale. And those guys are extremely effective to a point where Randy Johnson was tipping his pitches. You can know that it was a fastball and a slider. You weren't doing anything about it. And it really does feel like when Crochet is hitting every single mark, he's healthy, he's flame throwing, he is that level of dominance. I just hope they have the plan right. We don't know what the plan is, we don't know what the expectations for Garrett Crochet are. But if they're able to maintain him, he's able to stay healthy. I mean, they might have an ace because he looks that damn good in spring training. I know it's spring training, but I, I am excited for this first start for him. I hope it goes well because it really does feel like it can be a game changer for the Sox franchise. Kevin, Kevin Malloy brings up a good point in the chat. Like, are you expecting him to be throwing 99, sitting 99 for six innings yes. or 95, 96? Not six innings, but I, I am expecting him to go 98 to 101 because that's what we have heard so far from the reports at spring training. And you heard, too, in his first start against the Dodgers, he's cranking 101, right? So if this is the adrenaline of opening day making your first start, yeah. the adrenaline should probably push him to 101. Am I wrong? Like, you're, I, you're not wrong. I, I hope hey, I hope I your know. prediction comes true and mine doesn't. Because if, he's, if he's out there throwing 95, I'm going to be throwing up in our bathroom. I mean, 95 can get people out, too. But, yes, I get it. I get it. You can't be 95 fastball slider guy and succeed as a starting pitcher unless you're hitting corners, hitting spots. Because they'll just they'll just wait out until you have to throw that fastball if you're not getting a slider across. Um, I think Don N is calling me Jermaine Dye in the in the chat. Congratulations. You you're not Jermaine Dye. You're, uh, yeah, you're I'm Jake, Jake, Jake Peavy. Peavy. Yeah, I'm Jake Peavy today. Uh, but, yeah, Crochet is Randy Johnson. That is why Sean Anderson is Dye. <laughs> And it's spelled T Y T Y E, which is either you know shirt die or Jermaine die. Yes. Uh, all right, let's uh, get into Tariq Scooble. Scooble. Pay attention to his fastball. He's increased his velocity. His slider was already nasty. He's a three pitch pitcher. I think he also offers a changeup, but he's mainly going to be fastball slider. Yep. What I would love to see from this White Sox offense, it's not really any player specific. It's just will they walk? Will they work Scooble? Will they make it more difficult where? You know, he pitched seven innings and five innings in his last two outings against the Sox. Will it be a laborious five innings? Will it be a laborious four innings? Could they knock him out of the game early? I really want to see this offense put pressure on Scoogle in a true major league way, not in the White Sox way of we got 10 hits in one run, right? Like, let's get some walks. Let's get some nine pitch at bats, right? I would love to see a truly competitive lineup from the Sox today. Yeah, and that's what the White Sox need to do. And even if they do chase Scooble, this uh, Detroit Tigers uh, bullpen has been pretty good. It's been pretty solid the last couple of years. And I know bullpens from year to year are volatile, so you can't necessarily depend on it. But, yes, the White Sox need to wait him out. And this is his first major league start this year. So he's not going to have his sharp stuff today necessarily because he hasn't pitched with real live bullets going against him. So, yes, wait him out. Make sure if he's going to strike you out, cool. You can be a hitter still with two strikes. Don't be chasing his pitches. Don't be chasing that curveball because I know hitters are going to be sitting fastball, and then when he throws that devastating changeup, they're going to be way out in front of that, either rolling off to the shortstop or striking out all the time. That's what the White Sox just have to show me good at bats. Even if they strike out in some of his at bats, Drew Scoob is going to strike people out. I just need them to look competent at the plate unlike they did last year. Now, those players that we're talking about with Luis Robert and Aloy Jimenez, they can go for the downs. They, today, knowing that they're going to be, runs are going to be a premium versus an AL Cy Young Award uh, contender, runs are going to be a premium. So if there's a guy on base and it's Luis Robert in a premium count, 2-0, 3-1, go for the downs. Same thing with Aloy Jimenez. All the rest of the batters have to take their bat like this uh, me getting on base is the most important thing. Me getting hit by the ball, me butting for a hit, me getting a walk, or me running into a hit because these White Sox, oh, we already know this offense could be woeful. 
So the guys in front of Luis Robert and Aloy and the guys right behind Aloy, Aloy and Luis have to be about getting on base today. Nothing else. Not hero ball, not home runs, etc. We have five minutes left, so make sure you are leaving your predictions in the comments. Uh, we are about to get to our predictions, and we're about to get to our picks to click. Or click to pick? Click to pick. We're, we're going to rename this it hurt. eventually. Yeah, it's click to pick. Click to pick. All yeah. right, so we usually just have Vinny, me, and Herb select one guy, but Herb said, let's make this complicated. Yes. And a contest. And a contest. So our people in the <laughs> Discord, if you want to be a diehard, allchco.com, and become a diehard today, you can get access to our CHCO Discord. And in there, we give the ability for one of our players, one of our Discord members, to play along with us and click the pick. If that player, through a week's work, and this week is different because we're starting on Thursday, so we're going to go from Thursday today until April 7th on a Sunday. If that player gets and wins the let's click the pick, that person gets the points ne next to the person's name. So we rank the players one through nine. Best player like Luis Robert to nine, which is Nicky Lopez. We pick players today for our pick to click, and that's what you'll see if you're on the screen and watching this game or watching the show on YouTube. We pick players already for click the pick, and right next to them in the parentheses is their number of value for today's game and to read that off Luis robert jr one point aloy jimenez two points yohan mancada three points andrew bond four points de young five points ben Attendee, six points pilar seven points maldonado eight points and nikki lopez nine points so just to so simplify this for yeah simplify this for people if i go out there and select nikki lopez today and you determine nikki lopez has the best offensive game uh you i would receive nine points Yes. Okay. And so then we keep a tally for this Thursday until the two Sundays from now. Whoever has the most points wins. We don't win anything as right. uh, CHGO host, me, you, and Vinny. But if one of our Discord members, and of course, you can be a Discord member by being a diehard, allchgo.com slash diehard, they win versus all three of us. They get a free T-shirt from us yeah. and of, their of their choosing. Jared is going to be competing with us today. We are excited for Jared to be the inaugural member of this uh, pick-to-click game that Herb's trying out. So why don't we give Jared's pick? And honestly, it's not a bad pick. He's taking Luis Robert Jr. But the issue is if you take Luis Robert Jr. in every single game and he is the best offensive player, it helps because you're getting one point. But like what? You can only get up to nine points for him. You get one lucky Nicky Lopez game where he's hitting two homers, the local product, and there you go. I got nine points. So it's it's strategic. Yes. And so you got to know, like, hey, yeah, Luis Robert might be the guy every every day. And if he wins every day and you pick him every day, five points, enjoy yourself. Or nine points, enjoy yourself. But, yeah, as you said, you got to go with strategy in this pick the pick game. So I'm going to go with Andrew Vaughn. I know he's your guy, but yes. he's giving me four points today. The reason why – is because Andrew Vaughn has lost his fire from his first two years versus left-handers. He was a weighted runs created plus of 154 in his rookie year in 21. He was a weighted runs created plus of 115 in 2022. And 2023, the year he was settled at first base, finally. Weighted runs created versus lefties, 72. <clears throat> so that's the anomaly. I think he's going to get back to his rookie year where he's punishing left-handers especially versus Detroit. I think he did that to Gregory Santos his rookie year. I'm picking Andrew Vaughn today for my four points. I saw a nonsense short yesterday from a certain channel that talks White Sox talk, and I don't mean to be too stinky because uh, I know some people, like our coworker Vinny, has connections to this channel, so I don't want to be burning bridges or anything. But in the beginning of this short, the person remarked that they want Yohan Mankata to, quote, bring it to Chicago, dude, end quote. And I wasn't going to go into this rant, but then it ends the short by saying, quote, I want to see, does Yoan Moncada want to play baseball going forward? Because that's where it's at. No, it's not. It is not where it's at. Yoan Moncada, since 2021, has played in over 340 games. I don't understand this. Because when he's healthy, he's very, very good. Yeah. Right? If he had the ability to play 162, I bet your ass that he would play 162. We've seen in 2021, 2019, 2018 that he's played in over 130 games in all of those seasons. He's had some difficulty staying out on the field. But 
After returning from Chicago from injury on July 25th last year, he hit 281, 324, 464, and played in 54 of the last 60 White Sox games. From August to the end of the year, Moncada had a 1.2 F4, which was the same as Rafael Devers, and more than Jose Ramirez, Jake Berger, Manny Machado, and his teammates, Andrew Vaughn, Aloy Jimenez, and of course, Andrew Benatendi. I don't understand this because in his last full season in 2021, out of 19 qualified third basemen, he was number seven. Come on. This is your. Oh, yeah. He was was seven. Top seven. Top seven third baseman. I don't get this. I get that this was all about a reaction to spring training stats and Moncada has a 300 average and a 400 on base percent. And, you know, you want people to show it. But Moncada has showed it when he's healthy, when he's not dealing with long COVID. He was great in the World Baseball Classic last year and then got hurt. He was their best player in Houston last year to start off the year, and then he got hurt. Why is this a question about if he wants to play baseball or not? Because he made a fucking music video? F off. Moncada's my pick. Woo, that sucks. Woo, that sucks. Woo. Since 2018, he's one of 62 players who had over uh, 2,800 players. Ooh, I like Fiery Sean. It's That's a, my it, name. It's annoying when you question someone's want to play baseball. I, yeah. I get it. I'm hard on Andrew Benatendi. It's because I think he's a worse version of Stephen Kwan, and they signed with $75 million. And I was very clear that before he was even on the team that I didn't want him on the team. Yep. Mankata, I have, you what is he doing wrong? Uh, he's, a, he's great defensively. I He's think been some a people... plus defender in 2019, 2021, and 2022. He was negative one last year. What am I missing? I think people are unfairly attaching him and Aloy to be lazy, put those in quotes, and I'm not too fond of how some of the conversation is, if you know what I mean. If, you, if you're picking up what I'm laying down. So, yes, like you said, when your Mankata is healthy, and that's a big if, He's pretty good. And injuries, I'll really never blame a player for getting injured. I'll just call him injury prone. But it seems like some White Sox fans are just dead set on insulting the man and saying that and and signing something to him that no one else has assigned. So I think that you're right, Sean. I like Fiery Sean this early in the season. Thank you very much. And we'll have Fiery Sean on the post game as well. Because, hey, if Garrett Crochet throws four innings, I'll be ecstatic. Uh, Vinny Duber, our great CHGO White Sox beat writer, is going to be picking Paul DeYoung today. So Vinny's taking Paul DeYoung. I'm taking Yohan Moncada. Herb's taking Andrew Vaughn. And Jared, uh, C- should we go just Jared? CWS. CWS. White Sox. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Jared's taking Louis Robert. Too. That's for now. Jared's in the chat said he wants to change it because I just what? assigned it. I assigned it because he didn't get the answer into my the Discord in time. But, you know, Jared's probably working, doing things. And so he didn't get there. So I un- amis- initially just gave him the highest player available, which is fair. So he gets the best player available, but only one point. Sorry, Jared. But if you want to change <laughs> from now until like five minutes from now, I'm yeah. looking at the chats right now. So. You can change if you want to. Hey, we got an hour until the game starts, right? We got yep. about 55 minutes until the game starts. So get, get your pick in, uh, Jared. Uh, let's give our prediction for the game. The opening day yep. for 2024. The White Sox lose uh, five to nothing to the Detroit Tigers. I think that they won't score a run. They won't score a run. Oh. Uh, Tarek Scoob is going to be out there dealing. And the White Sox are not going to be patient like you're asking. The White Sox are not going to square him up. They're going to lose today 5 to nothing to the Detroit Tigers. That sucks to hear. I have the White Sox, believe it or not, they're going to lose uh, only they're going to lose 101 after this. Uh, but one of their 61 wins comes today. They're 4 and 1 win. I think that Garrett Crochet has a nice day on the mound. I think the bullpen with their nine players is extremely effective and I think that you will see a Luis Robert Jr. home run today. Uh, unfortunately, Jared might win click to pick, but I think Moncada might get on base. But overall, it matters mostly about homers and driving in runs. And the guy that does that best on the White Sox is Luis Robert Jr. But I think opening day, we'll see a good effort from this team. I think the Sox win 4-1. to one. It might be the most amount of runs they score in a game this, this I was going to say year, but at least this series. But I think they get the scoop. If we learned anything from last year when we did our opening day broadcast, that was the highlight of last year. I hope today's not the highlight, even though this has been a great day. I want some better highlights of the White Sox actually hitting. And hopefully from your your mouth to God's ears to the White Sox backs, they go out and crush two scoops four to one. Uh, 
Blank names asking, how do the Tigers with that lineup score five? Hey, man, I told you, four innings for Garrett Crochet, and then it's the bullpen game. A Michael bunch of, walking four? Yeah, a bunch of <laughs> a bunch of non-roster invitees making the team on the bullpen side, and the Tigers take advantage. And then you're going to get the Tigers manager uh, readjusting to the lineup that they usually would have on an everyday basis if they bring in a right-hander then. We got uh, Frank in the chat saying Crochet shoves for four and a half innings and paints the corners. Uh, no expert saying 5-0 sounds right. Zero runs on eight hits, two just because. <laughs> uh, Frank's also saying they lose one nothing, even though Crochet's painting the corners through those four innings. Other Sean has 5-4 socks. Blank name says a 2 nothing loss. And Jason Garnett with, I think, the comment of the year and probably at least for today. Crochet 14 strikeouts and in eight innings of work. Jesus Let's Christ. go, baby. Let's go. They like, haven't played a game yet. They're undefeated. They're first place in the AL Central. Chris Getz is starting anew. The White Sox are going to win the World Series in 2024. No? No, no. no. Jason, oh, okay. you got to come every day, just like our guy Matthew <laughs> Cortez, and predict yeah. every time that Gary Crochet pitches that same line, like I got Matthew Cortez pitches uh, a no-hitter for the White Sox every time. I don't see Cortez in the chat. Come on, Cortez. It's, it's a 5 nothing win for the Sox and a no-hitter for Eric Crochet and Brian Shaw. All right. I'm going to uh, put you down for that already, Martha Cortez, and give you credit if it does happen. If it, if it happens, he automatically gets the credit, even if we don't see the comment. All right. Any final thoughts? Perk. Just love opening day. Love Ballpark Pub. The folks here, Nikki and Richie, have been very accommodating. The folks that came out, Alejandro came out, Josh came out. And all the rest of the people here, the Brother Rights contingency, your yeah, people over go. there. Go Crusaders. We are, yeah. yeah. Crusaders are in the VR. house. Like, <laughs> is, is there anything better than opening day baseball? I don't think so in sports. It's one of the best days because, like you said, they're undefeated right now. Nothing can take us down until the game starts. I don't even uh, – do we give a shout-out to our guy Stokes, too? Shout-out to oh, Stokes. Oh, he's Stokes for, in the house, For too. showing up. Uh, shout-out to our guys uh, Tanny, Tanny and Shane as well. Yeah, my guy up. Bondo came through, too. Nice. Yeah, a lot of good people in the house here. Really appreciate everyone hanging out with us. Again, thank you to Ballpark Pub for having us. 514 West Pershing. They have fantastic sliders, fantastic drink deals online and Google. So come on down if you were looking to watch a game. I think they got like four or five TVs here. They also have a back patio as well. Oh, That's yes. fantastic. So if you are a cigar smoker like Greg Braggs, you can go sneak out on the patio. Uh, it's a very lovely place to watch a game. So 514 West Pershing. Also, thank you to Lining Kugel for uh, presenting opening day for the CHPO White Sox show. Everything else? I don't have anything else. I'm just Anyone looking forward to this toes. baseball game. Yes, yes. mercy. Uh, thank you to Craig, Melissa, Frank, Derek, Jason, other Sean, everyone for hanging out in the chat. We had over 100 people watching. Make sure you hit that thumbs up button on your way out. Thank you to everyone for hanging out with us at Ballpark Pub for not only the CHGO Bears, but also the CHGO White Sox show. We will talk to you live after the game, after the White Sox win against the Tigers. We'll talk to you at the CHGO Sports YouTube channel. Goodbye. <laughs> Dog City like the mayor.